Today in Tinkercad, we're going to start by learning to make some buttons. This is going to give us some practice with shapes and also working with the holes in Tinkercad. So the first thing you want to do once you're signed into Tinkercad is over here on the left, go to Designs, choose Create, and choose 3D Design from the list. This will bring you into a blank Tinkercad project. And we're going to start by coming up here where it has the silly names that Tinkercad gives it. And we're going to change it to your name and button. All right. First name only is fine. We don't need your last name unless you share a, la a first name with someone in the class, in which case put your last initial. So now we're ready to begin. We're going to make a couple of different buttons and we're going to start with a very simple one. Over here on the right are my basic shapes, and I'm going to grab a cylinder and drag it out. Now, with my cylinder, I'm going to come to one of these white squares in the corner. Okay, there are four of them in the corners, doesn't matter which one. I'm going to put my mouse on top of it, and before I do anything else, I'm going to hold down the shift key on my keyboard. Holding down shift means it's going to change the length and the width at the same time so that it stays a perfect circle and does not turn into an oval or an ellipse. So I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to drag that out and I'm going to make it nice and big. I don't want to cover the entire work plane because we're going to add another button later, but I do want a nice decent size so I can see what I'm working on. So now my cylinder is a lot larger, but a button is not normally this thick. To change the height, I'm going to come to this white square at the top. This is my height button. And I'm just going to hold my mouse button down and I'm going to drag it down until it's eh, close to three. It doesn't have to be exactly three millimeters, but around three is fine. So now I have the basic shape of my button. Now I'm going to add the holes to it. I'm going to start by getting this gray cylinder shape over here. This is my hole button for the cylinder. And I'm going to drag it out onto the work plane. I'm going to come to my corner square again, and I'm going to hold down shift again. I'm going to make this a lot smaller. I'm going to go down to about eh, seven or eight is good. I think maybe I want that a little bit smaller, maybe. That's all right. So I'm going to zoom in a bit so I can see it a little better. Now I can get my little buttons back. And this one, I want to be a little bit taller so I can see it better. Nice and tall is really good. I need two of these because I'm going to put two holes on my button. So while it has these squares in the corner, I'm going to hold down the control key on my keyboard and press the letter D for duplicate. Doesn't really look like anything happened, but now if I drag it off, I have two that are exactly the same. I'm now going to click my little house button here. This is going to bring me back to my main view. And I'm going to take one of these and put it right about here. The other one I'm going to put right next to it. And these are going to become my buttonholes. Now, before I go any further, I want to kind of rotate around and make sure they look pretty even. They look okay. Now, the last step for this is to do what's called grouping the shapes so that it becomes one single shape instead of three separate ones. To do this, I'm going to start over here on the work plane, kind of in the corner away from my drawing. I'm going to hold my mouse button down and drag a box over it, making sure that I grab all three pieces, the circle and the two whole shapes. When I let go, my shape menu over here should say I have three shapes selected. If it doesn't say three, go back and try again until it does say three. Then right above this menu, you see a square and a circle melded together. This is our group button. I'm going to go ahead and click group. It'll take a moment, 
And now you should see I have my two buttonholes. So now my first button is done. I'm going to put it kind of off to the corner here. Now we're going to begin our second button. I'm going to go back and get my cylinder shape again. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to change the color of it just so we can see the difference between the two of them. So I'm going to go with purple for this one. I'm going to come back to my corner square, hold shift, make it a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to grab that top square, just like we did with the first one and shrink it down to about three or four. So this is going to be the center of my flower that I'm making. We're gonna make a flower button. This is going to be the center. I'm going to make sure it's selected and I'm gonna do Control D again. That gives me a second one. I'm gonna change the color of this one. I'm gonna make it a light purple, just so it looks a little fancier. And I'm going to put it right about here. Notice how it's overlapping a little bit. This is going to be my first flower petal. While it's still selected, Control D. This one's going to overlap like this. Control D again. And I'm just going to keep overlapping these around to make the actual flower. Control D. And then let's see, I'm going to move these just a little bit. And then one last one right there. So this has now become my flower shape. I'm going to grab the top corner up here and just draw my box over all of them again. Again, make sure I get all of those shapes. I had six petals and one center, which means I should have seven selected. And I'm going to click my group button. Now, when I do that, it changes it to all one color. That's fine. It can stay all one color. Or if I click here, I can come down and choose multicolor and it will show all of my colors. Now, the last step for this is adding the holes, just like we did with the first one. I'm going to grab that cylinder hole shape. I'm going to come to a corner square, hold down shift shrink it down a bit. I'm going with about eight. That's what I do. Oop, I let go of shift too soon. Notice how it's eight here and one here. That's not great. Control Z is my undo tool. So I'm going to hold down shift again, shrink it down a bit, make sure I let go of my mouse first and then let go of shift. I'm going to rotate my work plane a little so I can see that top button better. Lift it up nice and tall. And then while it's still selected, Control D to duplicate. So I get two of them again. I'm going to click my home button to go back to the main view. And these are going to go right in the center of my button like this. I'm going to rotate it around, make sure they look lined up OK. And then I'm just going to draw one more box over this button and come up here and click my group button one more time to put the actual holes in. So now I have my buttons completed. They are ready to go.